I'm back. Y'all better not make me get up off this couch. All right, let's do this. Hello, everybody. My name is Brianna, and welcome back to Carefree Bree. So glad you could join me. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my channel, to my blog, to this video, to everything I got. Yes, I am back for my regularly scheduled program. Had to take some time out for myself last week with my blog and switched it up a little bit with my last YouTube video, um, which I will include the link to below. Um, but we're back, you know, to doing what we do best, which is, you know, having a good time talking about the week, you know, having final thoughts, talking about L's and W's, all that. So let's go ahead and get started. But first, you already know. This is green tea, but admittedly I've been sipping this for a while, so it's not like warm like that no more. So it's not here to like keep me up like I need to be, you know? Because a lot of y'all got me tired. Okay, so I'm going to start out with Thursday per usual. Um, my L for the day was that, you know, of course, regular stuff with body and pain and everything. But the good part is I made it through the entire work day, so that's good for me. And honestly, that's it, so I'm going to just keep it going. <laughs> Friday, on the other hand, was a different story. Um, the L, I had so many, but I'm going to just condense it, okay? So I wasn't going to go to work at all. Um, because my body was just flaring up so much but I had a meeting that my boss and I had been pushing back for like two weeks so I went ahead and went to work I ended up like going in about four hours late so I literally rolled in to the to work had the meeting and then left <laughs> it was that bad I'm kind of mad at myself that I even got out of bed to begin with you know like certain days I need to take care of myself and even though certain things might inconvenience other people, if it's going to do more harm to me, then that's not something I should be entertaining. You know, being inconvenienced and being harmed are way two different things. And so I should have taken care of myself like I needed to, but I guess I just gotta do better next time. Plus it doesn't help that I thought my dog was literally dying the entire day. My parents gave me a call and let, let me know that, you know, she's not doing too well, we're gonna take her to the vet, but it could be her last day. Um, my dog, survived thank god that's my w she survived she's fine she's really old guys she's like literally 17 years old a big bag of like fluff and dust <laughs> but she's adorable and she's great and i want to keep her around as, as for, for as long as i can you know i've had her since i was nine i named her myself her name is angel technically angel marie i gave her the middle name because i wanted to be a little extra it was nine don't make fun of me. <laughs> so for Saturday, I was a bit of a hermit. Uh, didn't do much during the day because I just needed that time to kind of be by myself. Yeah, some days like are just better than others. And that day, even though my body was feeling better, I was pretty slumped. So I was on the couch for a while and I just watched American Dad reruns. But that night though, I got it popping with my friends. I will say I was a bit of a hot girl. You know, you know, got some free shots, you know, other free drinks and did some dancing and whining and you know even some slow dancing but yeah I enjoyed my time I saw a lot of Mizzou folks from out of town we met up with them even saw some Mizzou folks um, that are in the city that I just haven't seen in a while and it was so it was just so great to have my Mizzou family back together again um, yeah as Tigers just kicking it you know ruling the night taking over things that kind of stuff Sunday Whew. That was a doozy. So first of all, Sunday morning I woke up and I was kind of hung over. So every time I drink alcohol now, like, it is just not good. Okay, <laughs> at least I didn't throw up or anything. I had my Gatorade, drank that in the morning and took, you know, my leave. And on top of that, when I went over to my folks place later on, there was a huge car accident in front of their place. They live off of like 79th and Normal. One car was parked on the side of the road like it was allowed to be. And the other one crashed into it and was driven by none other than a drunk and high driver. Long story short, um, things almost got spicy. <laughs> Just know I got some real ones in my family and we are down to protect each other and protect those around us at, you know, whatever cost. But we got each other's back, we rolling deep, so don't come mess with us. So aside from that whole car accident thing, why I was over off of 79th and Normal was because my aunt's neighbor was having a drag show. Every year my aunt and my neighbor throw like this slew of parties on Labor Day weekend. Everyone wears white and comes over and parties with her in their backyards, since their backyards are connected. And then on the other day, Max, my aunt's neighbor, has, um, you know, a drag show, an annual drag show that he hosts. And he dresses up in glamour 
glamorous drag likened after the Diana Rosses and whatnot. And he just lip syncs his heart out and he was like literally rolling on the floor singing. Mind you, he is like literally 70 something years old, a great pair of legs. He was working that Diana, okay? He had other people come up from the garage after they got dressed and they drag, you know, whether it's women dressing as men and men dressing as women and doing their little songs or whatever. I loved it so much. He always shows out. Monday, I was like actually pretty good all day until like the moment I actually wanted to get up and do something. <laughs> Don't you hate that? Like you're chilling and nothing's going on, but the moment you decide to actually get off your ass and get something done, your body or your brain or whatever is like, mm, nah, we're not doing that. So that's what happened with me, only not with my body, but with my mind. I told y'all before, I disassociate sometimes. It's like where you're technically having like an out of body experience. It's like actually pretty terrifying. <laughs> and it happened right before I was about to go and visit my grandma and my family and them out in the burbs. And so I had to like forego visiting them because I wasn't willing to risk everybody's life while I'm driving technically outside of my body while in my car on the road. So if that makes sense. <laughs> but at least it was Labor Day, that's my W, was that, you know, I did not have to go to work. I got to at least stay on my ass and like recover and things and you know, that was that, it was cool. Unfortunately, me feeling well led into Tuesday, so like I was still really having a lot of fuzziness, disassociation, so I couldn't leave my apartment. Not only messes with like your sense of like grounding and being in the moment, but also your sense of balance. Meaning I will fall over on my face and embarrass myself. <laughs> so I decided to stay at home and I was able to work from home. So that's my W, is that I worked from home. And then leading into today, um, my L I guess would be that, you know, it's been kind of a blah day. I've kind of fallen behind a little bit on some of my work, but you know what, I'll take it. And of course, like I said, I worked from home today, so that was great. Um, I just love not having to leave my bed, not having to leave my couch, not having to leave my apartment, and not having to see no damn body, especially the people that piss me off, so we're good. Honestly, when it comes to the ruling for this week, I think I'm gonna rule it a draw. You know, it's not really an L, it's not really a W. I had some great moments and I had some awful moments and I think they weigh each other out. So I'm gonna go ahead and just rule it a draw. But enough of that, now that we've got my week out the way, it's time to get into these big L's and big W's of the week. This big L I hate to do and some of y'all gonna be mad at me, but I don't really care. Pull up if you have a problem. My big L this week goes to Jay-Z. I know, I know, I know, but to be fair, it's not my fault. He literally did it. I had nothing to do with it. He did it. Let's get into it. So a couple weeks ago, I came on here and gave the NFL the big L of the week because of their dealings with Jay-Z. Not necessarily because they partnered with him, but because I felt they were gonna try and use him to their advantage and to everyone else's disadvantage, right? They were gonna take somebody who is well-intentioned and exploit him for all he's worth. Um, because they're the NFL and the NFL is made up of white men and white men are men and men are people and people are freaking greedy and they will suck you dry and it looks like this might actually be you know coming to fruition I know some people were like well let's wait and see what his plans are let's wait and see XYZ well we've waited and we've seen and a lot of us are not happy and rightly so you know I feel like Everyone who is upset with Jay-Z has a right to be upset with him. If your best girlfriend comes up to you and has your back during this whole entire argument and then all of a sudden she decides to side with not just the other person, but you know, then starts to criticize you, you're not gonna be too happy about it. And that's what happened with Jay. So a video came out of Jay-Z having a conversation alongside Robert Kraft and some other NFL officials Disclaimer, I didn't know this until today. This video was actually from like the beginning of this year. I wanna say like February. It's not necessarily the timing of it that concerns me. It's the content and then also what leads to that. I'm gonna you know, include like a little clip or something down in my uh, description so y'all can look at this video so I don't have to spend a lot of time like explaining. Basically, Jay-Z was in an interview and he explained that the reason why a lot of black young men have a problem with authority is because of lack of fathers in the home and that leads to feelings of you know you're the man of the house I, I hate you I hate this whatever I'm the man and then you know you have authority approach you in the streets like a police officer and you get tough with him or her talking about I'm the man of this I'm not listening to you at this at that and then it ends up in situations where someone ends up dead his words so it's really hard to talk about like something dying and then like my cat be here like that's awkward you know 
because it's like we were into something kind of serious and all of a sudden she comes up meow 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 i don't fucking know oh sweetie i love you i love you i do but you gotta go you gotta go okay bye see you later kiddo um you see how i said see you later kiddo and she didn't move <laughs> Anyway, so Jay-Z got on the mic and said this. Um, first of all, I honestly don't think this conversation needs to even be had by Jay-Z with people who are in rooms with Jay-Z. I don't think he has the range to be able to explain stuff like this. And that's not to say he's a bad person. I'm just saying that he is a great hip hop artist and maybe not the best social activist when it comes to speaking and you know expressing how a, an entire community would feel about something because that's what it feels right now it feels like he's trying to be the spokesperson for black folks when it comes to the nfl and i'm sure all of the right intentions are behind it so right now you're causing you know harm jay-z i'm sorry because when you sit in a room full of white men and you affirm to them what they thought that oh these black boys need to just respect police and they won't get shot that's harmful because people watch you people who hate your guts and people who love you looking to see what you're saying so that's why he's getting this l is because his tact isn't going well right now okay i'm not saying that he needs to know it all or whatever but i am saying if you're gonna go in a room full of rich white men who don't give a damn about black folks anyway and are who are only looking at you because of your dollar signs and you do not even need to be entertaining that I think I've seen enough to say I'm not on board with this, you know? Like, you don't have to experience the entire haunted house to know that this shit is scary and we need to get out right now, you know? I mean, I wasn't telling you to get out as long as you know that it wasn't directed towards you. <laughs> I'll be able to let my cat know sometimes. And the thing is, I'm not like super mad and frustrated with Jay-Z or whatever. Sometimes it's just you're getting an L because you made the wrong decision and that's that and we can move on, do better. You know, it's not, you know, one of those things where it's always like this awful person. Sometimes it's somebody that I don't want to give the L to, but like we can't ignore the facts here. So it is what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and skip the honorable L's and W's for this week. So I'm gonna jump right into the big W of the week. Now this one I am so excited about. This one is also a twofer for this week. The big W's go to Naomi Osaka and Coco Goff. Uh, they are the two young uh, black lady tennis players uh, who shut it down this past week at the US Open, I don't know if y'all have seen these heartwarming clips, but basically um, Coco Goff kind of uh, broke down a little bit at towards the end of their match. Uh, she was playing Naomi, who is amazing. This young girl is 15 years old. There's so many things that could have been going on. Coco was so graceful in the way she handled herself, even through tears and bawling and all of this, she is just you know, so mature for her age. You can tell that she has a strong foundation with her family that's grounded her. She did great in her interview and, you know, shouted out Naomi Osaka. And then Naomi got on her interview, started crying a little bit too because she was talking about how Coco's family had inspired her all those times that they had practiced in the same gym together coming up. Like, it was just so heartwarming. I just love seeing black women big up each other, support each other, don't tear each other down. That day they both won. That's why they're getting this W. And now final thoughts. Speaking of black women, I kind of just want to remind everybody to protect black women and to love black women. I mean that with all my heart. I take it so seriously because there was an incident that I encountered on Friday where I had to do the same. Like I said, I wasn't feeling well at all. I literally feel like I got hit by a truck. I had just found out my dog was like possibly dying. So like I'm a mess and I'm on the bus trying to keep it together. And in front of me, this girl from, who from the back looks to be a white girl. She looks to be white passing at least. I watch her take a picture of this elderly black woman who's sitting in front of her 15 times to get the perfect shot. I watch her circle the tag from this women's, you know, headband that was sticking out of her little, you know, salt and pepper afro that she had. And I watch this girl type on her freaking Android phone, OMG, it's a wig. And then her phone starts to buzz. Lo and behold, it's her friend and they start laughing and talking about it together on the phone. I, I, it does not sit right with me at all. I do not handle disrespect well in my presence. So that includes other people disrespecting other people. That includes 
people disrespecting me. That's why I don't like any of the phobias. I don't like the homophobia, the, the xenophobia. I don't like the isms, sexism, racism, because these are just all classified ways of being rude and being disrespectful. And I seriously hate that shit. And I just knew I wasn't gonna be able to let it go. So I went tap, tap, tap on her shoulder like this. She looks up at me so sweet. I'm thinking, oh, you're so pretty. Oh, now I gotta read you. <laughs> and so I did this. Excuse me, hi, um, I was sitting right behind you and I want you to know that I saw what you did. I saw it, it's unacceptable, it's rude, and it's unbecoming of a lady. How dare you? See, thank you, thank you. But I also made sure to just talk to her and to keep my voice low. I told her personally, like, I don't wanna ruin your day. I want you to get off this bus and have an amazing day, but I could not let you leave this bus without letting you know that what you did was wrong and that you should never do that ever again. And I left. And you know, she tried to brush it off. It was fine with me because first of all, you're not gonna stand up and say that to my face. Second of all, you're not gonna stand up and meet me in my eye. Third of all, but you're not gonna do that shit again though. <laughs> Moral of the story, sometimes you don't have to do this huge blow up thing. Sometimes you can do the smallest things to let people know that they either had you or somebody else fucked up, feel me? Cause like I said, we don't do that to people in general, that's unacceptable, but I get really testy when it comes to our elders, especially our black women elders. Like I do not play with that, that is not funny. We already live in a world that doesn't love us anyway. So show us love with your actions and your words. It would be greatly appreciated. And that is it for me this week. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe, all of that. Also make sure to donate to my Patreon, my PayPal. Um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna put that information below. That's so I can basically send you guys more content, come up with merch just so I can, you know, like expand my brand more so I can do like a whole bunch of things and so I can do it with you. No matter what you do on the social medias, wherever you might be, be sure to hashtag Carefree Bree. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of your hair. I've been talking too much tonight and I'm gonna go ahead and hop in the bed anyway. I am wishing you infinite freedom and perfect peace. This has been Carefree Bree. See you guys next week.